This time on 15 Minutes You'll Never Get Back. Come on. You know what I'm talking about. Leg shaving fails. Even if you love reboots, sometimes they come along too late. And would you ever compliment a coworker's looks? I'm Dale. And I'm Charlie. All that and more on this episode of 15 Minutes You'll Never Get Back. You gotta be careful these days when even complimenting a coworker. Like oh, their no, outfit. Nothing. Just it's probably best. It could backfire. Unless unless they ask you a specific question about it, uh, you don't just offer anything. Well, here's which the is thing. sad, isn't it? Someone on Twitter claims there is a word that you can use when you want to say something nice about a coworker's outfit that is totally safe in any context. And that word is? Yes. Snazzy. Snazzy? Snazzy. It's such a lame word, Snazzy. too. Because well, you really can't well, take it the wrong... a black and white movie with fedoras on? So, yeah, hey, that's looking pretty snazzy. <laughs> here are some examples of how to use the word. You could say, hey, those are some snazzy earrings you've got on. Or, wow, that's a snazzy shirt. See, like there's no... Snazzy doesn't sound negative, right? It so doesn't sound negative. Really... It doesn't sound sexualized. It does exactly. There is no implication. There is no come on involved. There is so, nothing. If you're looking for a different word, yep, you could try the word neat. Neat. For example, that necklace looks neat. Hmm. Those are some neat shoes you have on today. Wow. Hmm. So lame. What's this world coming to? I don't know. You just preferred if somebody walked along and said, "Look at that snazzy, <laughs> don't Charlie?" Absolutely. <laughs> Nobody said that in a while, though. <laughs> Do you have a non-sexual thing that really turns you on, like just gets your cranks just going? Intelligence. Okay. Like I get a thing for like newscasters. Right. When I see them, like there's some on you know television newscasters. Right. I well, just think, yeah. It's a good thing me and you work together because. There's no problem there. <laughs> There's no problem <laughs> No there. problem there. So here's the thing. A bunch of women were polled and asked what non-sexual thing turns them on to a guy. Yeah. And here are the top responses. Okay. Seeing a guy reading a book and wearing thick square glasses. I don't wear glasses. That's oh, not fair. Well, you could just get them. Okay. <laughs> Am I going to be one of those guys that gets the fake glasses? Yeah. <laughs> Having a great conversation with a guy who has nice teeth and a great smile. Mm. Mm. I got those red wine stains and coffee stains going on my teeth. Watching a guy fix something and being handy gets girls going. It's amazing I ever had a date in my life. <laughs> a lot of women love the athletic guy. Watching them play sports, you know, like softball, things yeah. like the volleyball. Okay. Uh, watching a guy get dressed. Apparently, super sexy. See, but that's 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 got an error element of sexuality because you know what? What were I you guess. doing in the room with him before he was dressed? I don't know. Maybe they're just passing by. Oh, just just passing by. And uh, this one, uh, I can relate to. Yeah. Love to see a man in a suit with a crisp white button-down shirt and cufflinks. God, my heart's pounding already. <laughs> <laughs> that was about a medical fun fact, Charlie. Travelers are now checking into fitness resorts to drop their pandemic pounds. The quarantine 15? For the past year and a half, people have been at home, right? Ordering takeout, binging Netflix, working from home. Yes. So according to a March research letter, people gained, are you ready for this, more than half a pound every 10 days in lockdown. That's a pound and a half a month. That is, what does that work out to then? That works out to 18 pounds over the course of the year. So then you add another nine on top of that. So that's 27 pounds that people on average have gained in a year and a half. So now there is a huge urge to obviously drop these pandemic pounds. Now that the world is opening up, weight loss fitness resorts are reaping the benefits where people, instead of just going to like sit on a chair on a beach, they're actually going to these fitness retreats. So they actually have like fitness they do. It's like, like a sandals version, but it's a fitness kind of thing. Yeah. So you can do rock climbing or yoga or swimming or, or aquafit. 
things like that. <laughs> does doing a lap across the pool to get to the pool bar at the other end count? It does for me. It's time for you to travel. Time for you to see the sun. Time for you to see your toes again. Let's melt away that quarantine 15 in the Caribbean sun. Welcome to Punta Flava. Yes, Punta <laughs> Flava, where sunshine galore and plenty of sunscreen to cover all that extra you. Cool pools with reduced water levels to avoid overflow. And buffets with plenty of kale and flax abound. <laughs> and of course, Punta Flava is known for its refreshing drinks to cleanse away the evils of the past, like our famous Pina Colonic. Yes, Punta Flava. <laughs> you know it's where you need to be. Because everywhere else, they're just going to splash you with water and try to push you back in the ocean. Just how smart is that smartphone of yours? How smart is it? Smart enough to know when you're drunk. Oh, come on. Check it out. This is thanks to a feature called a gate-related feature. This is an underutilized sort of sensor on your phone that maybe we didn't know was there. But your phone can tell when you're drunk. So to confirm this, scientists took 22 adults, Mm -hmm. gave them a vodka cocktail. The scientists then strapped each person's phone to their lower back using like an elastic belt. They turned on this feature. Participants were then asked to walk a straight line once an hour for seven hours after. (laughs) Okay, it's a sobriety test, basically. Basically, (laughs) and the phone measured within a 90% certainty when the volunteer was drunk. You're kidding. Scientists say that this can actually probably help reduce intoxication among people. So I guess it's like, you know, when you check your, your heart app for how many steps yeah. You take a day? Yeah. So I guess maybe there'll be like a drunk app? I didn't know that they had something like that that was available. I mean, it's hard to believe. Oh, oh come on. What? What's that? No way, man. There's hardly any Baileys in my coffee. <laughs> so my day started off, and we're staying at a friend's place, and there's a nice restaurant down the street, probably about a kilometer and a half away, maybe a bit more. Okay. So my wife goes, well, let's, let's walk down and have breakfast. Okay. That seems like a good enough walk. If we'd gotten up at 8 o'clock in the morning and done that walk, however, by the time we finally started to get our butts going and out the door, it was 11 o'clock in the morning. Okay. And by now, the temperature had risen. Okay. Because we also up there, even though it was Thunder Bay, had the heat spell. Okay. So the temperature was about 30, Ugh. and the humidex was about 37, 38. Gross. So by the time we walked a K and a half to get to the restaurant, well, needless to say, both of us were pretty like, whew, oh, that was not good. Right. So then we had breakfast. Right. And then we go, well, I'm going to phone a friend of mine to get me to come home. Right. Bring, bring us home. Right. Couldn't get hold of him. Damn it. All right, well, let's walk. Okay. Let's go. Come on, we'll do it. We walk back. By the time we got back to the house, I'm pretty sure we were both suffering from a, just on the verge of heat stroke. Oh, dude. So we heat go stroke? inside. Yeah. In Thunder Bay. We go inside and we just kind of chill. My wife has a nap. I just veg on the couch for a couple hours. And it's like, we got to go in town because we got to pick some stuff up at the store. So we drive into town and then we drive back out of town and we park the car. So now I've already had like a touch of heat stroke. So now I'm still kind of like, Whoa. I grab the bag of the stuff we picked up. My wife goes ahead of me. She opens up the garage because you go into the house from the garage side. And she opens it up. But the garage door is like really noisy and, and she's right. like, Ugh, this thing makes, it's going to break. Right. She, she stops it. Okay. Sneaks underneath. Okay. My wife's like 5'5". Five, five. Yeah, walked, yeah. Okay. She cleared it. Right. Didn't tell me, though. I'm walking ahead. Got to watch for the trip hazard because the stones are a little uneven going into the thing, so I'm looking down. <laughs> Bam. <laughs> I walked full tilt. Amazing. Forehead right into the garage. I'm like, what did you do that for? Why would you stop it? I don't know. It's making some noise. I thought it might break. Oh, so instead of breaking the garage door, which we can fix, you'll just let your six foot four, 55 year old husband walk headlong into it. Break your face. Break my face. <laughs> so then I go, great. My birthday's beautiful. Heat stroke and a concussion all in one day. And I go sit downstairs and she goes, I'll get you a cold cloth for your head. She brings it over. She's wet the towel and wrapped it around an ice pack. And then she puts that on my forehead till it starts to sting. <laughs> I go, what? You, ow, what is it? It's too cold. Oh, my God. I've got frostbite now. I've got heat stroke, concussion, frostbite. Happy birthday to me. 
<laughs> just sounds like a good day. Again, thanks to TikTok, a lady named Lauren was able to share a time-saving leg shaving hack. Let me ask you this. Do you watch TikTok? I do not. Okay, but you know about these things. Of course. Your kids watch TikTok? Absolutely. They tell you about these things? Absolutely. Okay, good. In fact, my son told me, he's like, Mom, there's a lady that told me that you can shave your legs in five seconds if you do this. And you're like, tell me more, son. Right? I looked it up. (laughs) I've got the video. It basically means that you are running the razor up and down your leg without letting it leave your leg. However, this got me thinking... It still doesn't take away from the fact that sometimes it's just not worth the effort. In fact, a lot of times, shaving your legs comes with epic regret. And not for the obvious reason, although that's a big one. The obvious reason is? Friday night. Gotcha. But let me explain something. Here I am thinking nicks and cuts and scratches. Well, there's that, no, but hold not, on. not Charlie. But here's the thing. I mean, I don't <laughs> think guys really appreciate the effort... And commitment it takes to shaving your legs. Mm. For example, when you buy the perfect little black dress, only to realize that you have razor burn. You did everything right. Okay, you soaked in a bath to soften up your legs before you jumped in the shower to shave. You had your post-shaving regimen with Mm -hmm. your cream. Mm -hmm. You put on this beautiful dress Uh and you got these horrible red bumps running up and down your leg. Oh. And at that point, your life is over. (laughs) Another thing, when you shave your legs and then you need to put on stockings. Yes. This sucks. It's like a catch-22 because you need to shave your legs to put on the stockings because if not, you got these little leg hairs sticking out. Right. Right? Especially if the stockings are fine, those leg hairs will just rip your stockings in half. Mm -hmm. But then when you put the stockings on after you've just shaved your legs, your legs get all itchy and start to hurt. So you spend half the night, like, you know, like itching your inner thighs. (laughs) <laughs> and it does not look attractive. That's got to be tough to do discreetly at a restaurant. There is no discreet <laughs> about it. But the worst, the absolute worst thing about shaving your legs. Uh-huh. When you nick your heel or your ankle. Oh, so it is a nick and a cut somehow. It is a nick and a cut. And when that happens, you can't wear the shoes you want. You got to wear the obvious. I cut myself shaving band aid. And suddenly your husband's week goes from Thursday to Saturday. And there is no. <laughs> Never. Also, uh, men are completely baffled with women's uh, complete obsession with a puppy. Barbie, you want to try that again? <laughs> okay. Either Hollywood and now officially is out of ideas, yeah. or everyone is now finally accepting the fact that the 80s were awesome. They were. This is something we've been hoping for and dreaming for, and now today I can die. And by we, we mean Charlie. <laughs> A Dirty Dancing sequel has been confirmed with Jennifer Grey. Shut the front door. Oh, my God. <laughs> the original movie, 1987, mm-hmm. co-starred the late Patrick Swayze. Yep. It was one of those movies that when every girl saw it, yep. she so badly wanted to learn the lift. <laughs> <laughs> now, the sequel um, promises to be a romantic movie, like the first one, chock full of nostalgia. Yep. So I'm not sure how they're going to go about this. Dirty Dancing um, was a smash hit at the box office. Mm. I've had the time of mm. my life. Oh, the yeah, theme yeah. song I won an Oscar. Hungry Eyes. She's like the wind. Oh, I mean, the so soundtrack, good. right? Now, yeah. here's the thing. Jennifer Grey is in her 60s. Yes. The only so, thing that's lifting on her is well, her bra. <laughs> that. But I was thinking now, how is this going to go? So, instead of carrying a watermelon, mm-hmm. she's going to be carrying prunes. <laughs> instead of doing the lift, <laughs> yes. she'll be doing the crawl. Oh. <laughs> No need for an abortion. Oh. Penny's had a hysterectomy. Oh, well. <laughs> and instead of putting baby in the corner. Right. They'll be putting her by the buffet. <laughs> <laughs> She's got the winds. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Can't go through the night without going pee. <laughs> Won't walk through the moonlight, get sunspots from the sun. It's time for her meds, but she's not sure which one. (laughs) 
Oh, her breath is so bad. Her dentures need a soak. <laughs> she likes to chew dentine. Cause she still smokes. <laughs> Just a fool to believe Beano is all that she needs. <laughs> She's got the winds. <laughs> Hey, thanks so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed that 15 minutes you'll never get back, follow and subscribe. More on Dale and Charlie at 1075coolfm.com. Download your favorite episodes there or at Spotify. Leave a review so our egos can get inflated. Waste your time next week.